Hello and welcome to my video. I'm so glad you could make it. This video is on a spreadsheet that I have developed to help keep me on track with my bus build. Even though I do not yet have my bus, it doesn't mean that I can't start working on some of the aspects of it. And one of the biggest questions in my mind was how much is this going to cost me? And that's what this spreadsheet is on. Now there's no numbers or very few numbers, uh, dollar values on the spreadsheet at this time because I'm just still compiling it. But I thought I'm at a point where I can share it with you so that maybe you can start your own spreadsheet while you're waiting to purchase your bus. Without further ado, here's my video. The first sheet of the budget that I had started for my bus build was a budget basically, but then I realized, well, as I'm creating the budget, I realized that I really don't know what it's going to cost me. So there's no sense in building a road budget until I know what things are going to cost me. And I'm not going anywhere until I get the bus built. And that budget is a little bit more important. So one page grew to 19 pages. So we're going to go through them fairly quickly because I just wanted to give you a sense of what I'm doing. And so the first thing that I had to figure out is what do I need to do to get this bus plated and insured? So I went to the MTO, which is the Ministry of Transportation for Ontario, their website, and I had to do a little bit of digging, but I did find it and they require, I believe it's seven things after you have those components in your bus, then you can go over to the ministry and say that it is no longer a commercial vehicle. It is no, privately right. owned and it is an RV. Here is my written declaration. That's simple enough. You know, just write down everything you did and any changes made to the vehicle that uh, meets the criteria for a motorhome. So if you go onto the MTO site in Ontario, um, that is providing you're an Ontario resident, of course. If you go onto the site and just search out um, motorhome, not RV, not trailer, motorhome. And that's how you will find it. It took a little bit of digging because their terminology is different from what everybody else uses. So motorhome is the one to look up. Then, of course, you have to get a safety inspection completed and certified and you have to get insurance and then you can acquire a 10 day permit um, rated as an RV um, to go and pick up your plates. Then we went on to the sequence of events and this is quite comprehensive, but this is basically a list that I can print off and check off um, for each side of the bus and the interior, the ceiling, the sides, the flooring, that type of thing. So I've just basically started a comprehensive guide on doing that. <laughs> now this number at the bottom here is is compiled from uh, a few components that I did know the prices on based on the links that I have here. For instance, uh, furring strips. So I just looked up on any site to get an idea of how much it's going to cost me. They're 488 each. So that means that um, if I need approximately 30, then it's going to cost me $149. But then we go to something like the um, the subfloor I want to do in a marine a marine grade plywood. Now, for those of you that don't know, the difference between a regular plywood that you get at Home Depot and a marine grade plywood is essentially the glue. So plywood is made by taking a layer of wood and putting another layer of wood with glue in between and then another layer and another layer. And I don't know how many layers they do. And then they compress it. The marine plywood, they use a water resistant paint. So when water gets on it, it's not going to deteriorate. Now the wood will still deteriorate because it's wood, but the glue that holds it together 
Um, it's made for boats and with a good coat of marine paint on it. Those things like last quite a long time. So this is what I plan to do. So I, I looked up, I got in touch with this one place down by Cornwall because I happened to be in that area at the time. And um, I figure for four or five sheets is what I'd need for the subfloor. It's going to cost me 720 bucks, and that's without the taxes. And this is the place that I was looking at is uh, Monaghan Lumber Specialties, and that's where you have to go to get the marine grade plywood. Now, I certainly wouldn't want to do um, the whole build in marine grade, but at least, at the very least, I want to do the subfloor. That was important to me. So to me, that's this, this price here is, it's an investment into the future of my build. Everything else on top of that, like any cupboards or walls or anything like that will be done in regular plywood. So I'll be saving a little bit there and I'll be utilizing as much free stuff as I possibly can find. And I'm not in a hurry to build my bus. It's not like I have to have it built in two months or anything like that. I just want to get it to the point where it, plated and then I can start building and I don't even really need the subfloor to get it plated uh, because there's nothing in the MTO website that says that it has to have a floor or a ceiling or anything like that. Uh, this basically is just a just a checklist for myself and this is the other reason why I'm putting all of this down is so that I can do comparisons. If things come on sale then I can buy them right away and tuck them away because I know this is my base price so if it's cheaper I know to grab it. The next thing that I had to think about was dimensions. Uh, for instance, what size are the windows? What size are the doors? What bus do I even really want? So I did some research on that. And Navi 2 from Navigation Nowhere um, has a 2004 Chevy Collins 6.5 diesel 3500 model dually, approximately 20 foot long, easy to find parts for, or consider a Chevy 6.6 .6 Duramax. This gives me an idea of, of the type of bus that I'm looking for, the type of engine and transmission that I can pinpoint. This is exactly the bus that I am looking for. And I will have two or three other buses that I will settle for. And I get different numbers from watching YouTube without actually having my own bus to actually take a tape measure and go and measure the door it's really, really hard to get to the dimensions because the main door is either 32 or 36 inches, depending on what bus body you have. And then I started doing things like, well, how big are the water tanks? If I want a 40 gallon, I think they come 42. If I want a 42 gallon um, water tank, what is that going to cost me? I'm thinking like, oh, 50 bucks or something like that. And I find out that for a 40 liter tank. That's a lot of money for a plastic jug of air. So moving on, I had to figure out, okay, well, what are my absolute priorities? And even this list is a little bit laughable because I've put things on here that are really, really not priority. That will go onto this spreadsheet, but I've, I've got it pretty much, you know, what, what my priorities are and with a few tweaks. Like I said before, it is a work in progress. And if you notice on most pages, I've got this in pink, keep all receipts, uh, because anything that you do to the bus, especially when you go to have it switched over to an RV, the MTO may request uh, receipts to see that you have indeed done this and you take pictures. So the next we move on to another idea that I really, really like, and I think is kind of genius. I've only seen three uh, YouTubers do this, and that is rainwater collection from their vehicle. So I just started writing down, well, obviously you're going to get water off the roof, so how are we going to get that? And we're going to get it off the deck, and we're going to get it off the solar panels. And all of this information um, that I've been looking at, and as I watch other YouTubers, all of it goes back around to what tools am I going to need. 
So I started making a list of tools that other YouTubers were using and quickly pricing them out. That's what all this stuff is here. And, you know, links to those tools. I'm going to need them for the build. So eventually this page will get separated out to what do I need now? What do I need for the build? And this basically is a list that I can print off and I can take to the store. Next, when we were think when I started thinking about my solar powers, I thought, well, uh, in order to purchase um, a solar power system, I need to know how big or how small to get. So we move on to solar power needs. So I started writing down for each room in the house what I would likely be using, what I'd like to use, may or may not, I don't know. So I figured, well, I might as well build the system and either make it expandable or build it right off the bat with the ability to carry these things even though I don't yet own them. So future-proof it, basically. And I just went through every room and area um, that I could think of that would need any kind of power and how much that power costs. My understanding of solar is getting better as I do more research. But when I first started, I honestly had absolutely no idea. I knew how it worked. I knew the idea. I knew that you needed solar panels that went into a battery. But what happens between the solar panel and the battery and from the battery to the light switch, it just right over me took me the longest time to figure out that an inverter was different from the controller and <laughs> so you know like I'm getting there I'm getting there very quickly and doing this particular page actually really really helped out because it kind of laid it out on my mind in the sequence of events almost um, but please don't take my word for it because I'm by no means a solar expert so then I started thinking, uh, okay, so solar, what exactly do I need? Because from the solar power system, I know it gets dispersed. And I figured, okay, well, I have no idea how many plugs I need. Or if I need, you know, 212 volt and 5110, or do I want to do 2110 and... A dozen 12 volt I don't really know so I figured I better sit down and figure this out anyway I just started breaking it up to see how many plugs do I have to buy in 110 and how many do I have to buy in 12 volt it's a good thing to know because once I know how many I need or want then I can put it on the list and I can figure out what's the best price and I can budget for it then <laughs> right now I could say $500 and find out that it's going to cost me $700. I don't know. And this is the whole premise behind doing this spreadsheet is so that I can figure out, you know, kind of what is this on the top end and the low end going to cost me? So from there, we move on to plumbing. We're going to go through this a little bit faster because we're starting to get into some time there. So plumbing, basically I've done the same thing as I did with the electrical. I have a better understanding of plumbing um, than I do of the electrical until it comes to my recirculating shower, which is going to have to be built from scratch because I'm doing something special with the shower and I can't just go and buy a shower pan and put it in and away I go. And then it brings me to specifically the plumbing for the bathroom and what components in the bathroom do I need. Right at the top we've got a DIY composting toilet and I've already got some of the elements for that put aside. And then I've done the same thing again for the kitchen and for the bedroom. And then I thought, well, I'm going to have probably maybe propane on board, so what do I need for that? So I've just, just begun this one table. And then I started thinking, well, the other huge area of the bus that takes up like, I guess one third is storage under underneath the bed specifically. And I needed to know what I'm gonna be storing under there to determine if I'm gonna have enough room. Because if I don't have enough room under a full size bed and I need four extra inches, well, I guess I get a queen size bed then. So the amount of storage that I need underneath the bed determines the bed size. And that brings us to the very last page, which is notes. So this is stuff that 
I'm finding, I find very interesting that pertains to um, either my bus build or uh, life on the road or something like that. This information just doesn't have a spot within the spreadsheet that I've created. That completes our tour of my spreadsheet. It is very comprehensive, but in the end, once this is completed, even if I don't fully complete it with all the pricing and everything like that, um, I'm going to try to keep it filled in with the correct information so that at the end of it, I can turn around and say, hey, remember that spreadsheet that I made for the budget and I said it was going to cost me 10 grand? Well, it only cost me seven and here's why. And I'd like to be able to do that video. I think it would be uh, pretty interesting to see. A lot of YouTubers will do bus budgets and I appreciate them very much, but those are road budgets, not necessarily building budgets. And I don't really know what they've got on their budget. So it was really, really kind of hard. And a lot of, a lot of the builders are in the States. So their pricing is a lot different. Their requirements are a lot different. So I thought I would do one for myself and share it with you. Uh, so that if you're building a bus, you at least have an idea of, you know, if you're in Alberta, you certainly wouldn't use the MTO site, but you can use the Alberta government site and you know what to look for in order to get your conversion turned over into an RV and get plated on the road. I hope you found some good information that you can take away and use for yourself. And if you have any questions, by all means, please leave a comment and I will try and get back to you as soon as possible. You all have a great day and thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate that you took the time. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.